Hello. There's not really like oh. any. I oh, oh, sorry. I knew. I knew it would happen. Yeah, yeah, it was gonna happen because I because this is the this I think the, the thing is is that what our usual brand is is that we 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 sort of start in with a terrible verbal like rendition uh, of a vo- no, like, vocal no. rendition of like the, the songs. But the thing is is that I mean with this one, I mean you, it's the same with like if we had done you know like Dawn of the Dead, um, you know back in the day. It's like well. What what music do you try and imitate in mm. that film? It's so you know weird and shit. Yeah. So apologies to the audience already because we have no gimmick opening this time. <clears throat> we're just here to say the... we're sorry. Yeah, today's um today's one is a bit of a different. You know, it's not really a because I don't think this one's an iconic. There's nothing particularly iconic other than the concept of this one. Not it's not we'll, as well, we'll known in... as. I mean, uh, well, yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Um about like how iconic it is and that later on because i might i might have a disagreement a disagreement mm. i might have a disagreement for you joe no but there's not like as you said there's not a soundtrack or anything that we can really yeah uh, pull oh, from or like a noise um yeah being, like, being a podcast we can't <laughs> yeah. uh... we can't do like comedic shit with the opening of this one which i guess also fits the tone quite a bit but mm. Yeah, I'm just immediately, right now, I'm thinking of, like, the Day of the Dead theme, where it's like, dun, 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 and it's like, that's there. Mm. You know, that would have been great to draw on. Um, yeah, people might not know that the filmmaker um, that we're going to be talking about today, and the film, uh, is actually something quite, like, the film not necessarily near and dear to our hearts as much as the former ones we've covered, but uh, we've covered them before on the podcast. It wasn't just that we covered them before. They were the first topic we ever covered. Not chronologically speaking, because of in like release order, because we released the Christmas episode first. That was our first video on the channel, mm. uh, but it actually came after. I also think that did that come after the Paul Verhoeven episode, or did that come after the Christmas? I, that might have come after the Christmas one. I'll be honest, I don't remember. It's a bit of a blur. What's been going on, to be honest. Yeah, but I, I it's, only it's... remember the blockbuster season and yeah. past that. That's we've, all I we've had a little bit of a break. Um, think yeah. we're doing other things. We've been, you know, uh, living life. Yeah, uh, so th- kind th- th- of. That's I guess that's like number one update. Uh, where have we been? Uh, mm. Well, uh, we're both adult men. We like to think, mm. and adult men have adult lives. You uh, can identify as whatever you want to identify yeah. as, Jack. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> Um, but basically, yeah, we, we so we did, we released the anniversary episode and we wanted to take a little bit of a break because mm. we've been going pretty hard the entire winter yeah. season. November had been a bit of a lull for us, but since October, we had really been pushing for it. it it's always good to take some breaks, but then, yeah. you know, we got into February and, you know, from a combination of, you know, being busy and like, you know, personal troubles and sort of stuff like that, for which, by the way, obviously... You know, mm. as of recording this, we're both in in you know in okay health. Uh, maybe when we release this, things will change. In which case, <laughs> uh, last man standing, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Highlander. There can only be one. I don't know. Yeah. Next um, episode will be a solo podcast. The Survivor. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's it's uh, <clears throat> I have a chance cube. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, Joe. No. Um, but yeah, I, we haven't I mean, even we haven't even introduced our names, by the way. So anyone who's never seen this before just thinks that we're a bunch of of uh, buffoons that ramble about things we've previously done. Hello, welcome to Two More Takes. Uh, my name is Jack. My name's Joe. Um, um, and we talk about films. Uh, at least we did. Um, we start hopefully by talking we'll be, about films. And we'll then... be back soon, hopefully. <laughs> we don't know what the the release um, of our future podcasts will be like because Joe does a full-time job. I am I'm, I'm entering a new job at the moment. I have been working full-time on my own, hmm. but I don't know how much um, time we're going to have for this going forward, but we're going to try and still push one out every now and again. Hmm. Um and uh, and see how it goes. Yeah, we're not dead but, yet. Uh, but we're not dead yet. But that is the way of life. So, that is the way of life. Uh, podcast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna face fuck God. Okay. <laughs> uh, viewer discretion is advised today. Yeah. <laughs> Starting with start. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great start. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Joe's spot on. Yeah, for you, discretion is advised with this film. Right, so, this is the first time we've done this. Um, so let's today we're talking about a film. It's called it's called the Crazies. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, back back in Romero's realm. Yeah, for any, for any of you that remember our podcast on George A. Romero and his Of the Dead trilogy, i.e., George A. Romero, the guy who invented the modern idea of the zombie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the there's his sort of other forgotten child, which is what we're talking about today, which is the Crazies that came out between uh, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. So technically speaking. It's the second film uh, where he sort of covers similar sort of topics. But technically speaking, just like the distinction is made about films like um, 28 Days Later, um, those were those are the sub- subcategory of infected films, which don't necessarily... They're not the same as zombie films, because the idea of an infected film is that the people infected with the disease or the whatever causes them to go, you know, like, and be cannibalistic and and murderous is um, a disease and that they're alive mm-hmm. still. Um, and in this film especially, it's like... Oh, boy. Um, but yeah, in terms of the viewer discretion, um, there is like some pretty graphic mm-hmm. sexual content in this. Nothing in the terms of nudity, just subject matter. There's a certain scene uh, that if you've seen the film, you know... Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't definitely... have to tell you. It's mm. just just be ready to be, you know, view discretion is advised. Mm. I think that was the thing. Obviously, this film came out in the 70s. Yeah, And 73. that's what makes it interesting because it's a little bit um, scandalous for its time, I mean, really. Uh, the thing is... In is many that, forms. But... Yeah, I, I think it's still scandalous now. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be honest with that. No, no. Obviously, other bits of it are just as, uh, are, you know, for the, the time, just as controversial, scandalous, um, but now have sort of become more of a... Mm. I said this to you when we were watching this, because we, we we watched this film together, because um, we were like, well, I, was, I was like, Joe, you know, there's uh, another George A. Romero film we've never covered, and I don't think... He, well, neither one of us had seen the original. I had seen the remake, which will also come into play later, but mm. um, I was like, why don't we start the new year with this? And Joe said, um, leave me alone, Jack. Uh, that's crazy. That's, sure. that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and then uh, he told me about a watch he shoved up his ass uh, in Nam. Five long years. Five long years. Um, um, anyway. But yeah, speaking of Nam, though, this is like the height of uh, of yeah. Vietnam, like c- closing it off really in terms of the time period, because this is the early seventies, seventy three. Mm-hmm. Um, Vietnam was starting to close up. Um, it was well. It was full. It was. I think it was in full swing. I think it closed up about. I want to say, seventy eight, but it might be like four years earlier, mm-hmm. like seventy four. The point is, is that the Vietnam War was fresh in in the public consciousness, and um, you can see you can see a lot of um aspects of that with the film uh, and other things that are a bit more current. But yeah, I I said mm-hmm. this to you when watching the film. I said that. This this film is just like it, it it's like looking in a mirror, uh, like a seventies lensed mirror of today, basically. Uh, because mm. as as of right now, we we have no more sort of um, publicly sort of uh, newscasted like variants of of COVID coming out. Uh, it's sort of being a bit dialed back. Everyone's uh, moved on to um, other topics in the news. Um, yeah, but uh... um, it's yeah it's. For... It's a dark time we live in, mm. but yeah, it, it fuck though. It's like I'm watching it, and then they're like talking about like masks, sort of like uh, regulations mm-hmm. and restrictions and stuff like that. And it's like and how... it is like a uh, mirror into mm. into our own reality. How poorly just really it's violent. Ex- everything's executed. The chaos, the panic. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so just it's... replace the Trixie virus with toilet roll, and you'd have like a one to one comparison. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, yeah, the crazy is basically, you know, experimental Mm -hmm. virus, infectious disease uh, gets loose in the water supply of a a wee little American town. And Mm -hmm. the military are like, we got to quarantine this place, uh, masks on, uh, 
But as you said, rather than uh, keeping everyone in their home, so like, let's put everyone in the school all together in an well, I'm, enclosed that's the thing, place. Though, it, but that's the that's the only thing where it's like, yeah, yeah obviously it's it's a bit it's very different, but, but it's, it's still like different it's context still like, anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like it's the seventies, so a lot of it's <clears> like we have to instead of like keeping um, people away from each other to reduce infection, it's like we have to get all the sick people in one place, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. was the was is the idea? But <clears> yeah, it's. It's um, it's funny though that obviously it, the the name of the film is such a great name for a film, The Crazies, um, mm. and I feel like that's because we watched this and on the original, um, at least on the version we watched, it had the original title of the film, which was Codename Trixie. Yeah. Trixie being the virus that gets loose in the water supply. Um, but that, that's that's an interesting thing. Like that, I feel like we don't. You don't get nowadays. You don't get like a film that was like um, made with one title and then published with another. Um, mm. Obviously, you get you get that happening nowadays, um, but with the respect of like you don't get the old title in the film when it's released. Uh, you know, whereas in this film, it's an independent film, uh, and it's like okay, we can't market the name code name Trixie. It sounds dumb. It mm. it does not sound you know very iconic. The Crazies is a great title for the film um and um i mean yeah you basically covered like the general sort of plot it's it's, it's just like surrounding like this outbreak in this town basically mm-hmm. and everything going to shit and everyone losing their minds yeah. whether they're infected or not it's... yeah so obviously the virus itself turns people a bit wacky um, people yeah. start losing their minds gradually but you know steadily and the great thing about that is that it's so like intangible as well because we never get like it's just like oh people we get told that people lose their minds but mm-hmm. it happens in very different ways to very different people yeah. um there's almost a part of me that thinks like from from how it's sort of like it's delivered to us that i feel like there's a possible interpretation this might just be like me being wacko but there might be a possible interpretation that there that there was no <laughs> virus that had been really like the virus mm-hmm. had not really been released and this was just like like a representation of mass hysteria, yeah. Because that happens. There, there was the mm. the dancing plague of like like the seventeenth century or whatever, where there was a woman who started dancing in a town, and mm. and she just wouldn't stop for days. And eventually, a man joined her, another man joined her, and soon, like the entire town was just dancing for days until people were dying. Like mm. it, and it, it, that is a recorded thing that happened in history. Like that's not just like. Yeah fiction i at least that's what i believe i might have been lied to by some internet videos but uh you, you will never know uh until somebody googles it and proves me wrong but yeah i mean i mean i think the the thing is is that beyond that the plot really isn't too much i mean it's just like it's the it's the joint sort of narrative of um the government being inept and trying to solve the problem uh and the the sort of people of the town uh, mm. trying to escape um and and sort of like survive past this sort of cuz cuz the biggest threat really isn't the um the virus uh, most of the time it's just the it's just the the soldiers the soldiers mm. that are just like the invaders like the literal faceless invaders that are sort of like color they're dressed up like stormtroopers and shit <clears throat> um like you know like plastic bag stormtroopers with gas masks yeah What's and fr- uh it's a freeway fight, really, because yeah. obviously the military are there to, you know, keep everyone in check. But then you get both the crazies who are already crazy and, you know, occasionally start, you know, killing soldiers mm. and the soldiers get into a bit of chaos and people are fighting each other. And then there's people who are just, you know, panicking and, you know, don't want military coming in, uh, telling them what to do and, yeah. you know, t- t- quarantine and, you know riot sort of things so yeah the the best feature of the film is that and it it, it is like the so the, so we'll talk about the characters soon because this actually comes mm. into it but the character dr watts who is the scientist that's forcefully brought in to solve the problem yeah um he he's like the he i, I he's almost like the guy who spits the most truths really in that um he comes in and, and he has a really sort of like I- iconic line which is like how do we even like you know we we how do we even know if any if someone's infected mm-hmm. you know it's it there's no way of knowing specifically if somebody's infected um unless because like, because the thing is is that 
and it's not because there there isn't like any possibility of that whatsoever it, it's because um everyone's acting so crazy mm-hmm. so insane like regardless it's like okay how would you even tell if somebody's starting to show symptoms you know it could be either misconstrued as um them being sick or it could just be them being you know like like you mm-hmm. know frustrated and and angry and upset and fearful yeah um and that's where the mass hysteria sort of th- thing comes in but I mean, yeah, the, you, so he's... He, Dr. Watts is a part of the government sort of um, program that developed the, um, the the bioweapon, basically. And he's brought in uh, forcefully. Uh, Colonel Peckham is brought in forcefully. He's just a guy they had um, sort of on standby. There's also the major who was already in the town with the mayor, sort of like... Mm-hmm. So basically, this thing had dropped in like four days prior, and they just waited to see what happened. And then they sent in the military sort of haphazardly, sort of almost the instant the film begins which is mm-hmm. a very different thing from the remake um the in the remake uh the military does not show up for like a good 30 minutes i think maybe a good mm-hmm. like 40 minutes it's um like the, it's a less sort of immediate thing in that it's more like they, they're keeping an eye on things and then they sort of storm and it's it's almost a bit like the the story sort of starts at an earlier position in yeah. the, the remake a little bit but um no, yeah, whereas in the original, it's just like it's just instantaneously the fire department's going into, into chaos. Yeah. yeah, a <laughs> bunch of children are burnt and one of them's died and one of them's going gone crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Their fathers, you know, like killed them and stuff. His family and shit. It's mm-hmm. it's it's, uh, it's yeah, and even having that beginning, you have like the homage to Night of the Living Dead with the basement and the brothers sort of mm-hmm. like pretending to be a zombie in the basement, which I it was a nice little neat touch. A lot of neat touches in this film where it's like yeah. it, it, it's like little quirks that really sort of um, benefit the experience. It's like mm. when the soldiers are gathering up all the family uh, and and sorry, all, all, all the family, all the families, all of the people in the town, basically. And there's a little girl that's like my teddy bear, mm-hmm. and the soldier that picks her up sort of like take, has a moment where he sort of like and he's like he sort of like turns to uh, round a little bit. And it's like okay, I'll 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 let I'll let let her mm. down to pick up her teddy bear, and then we'll leave. Well, that's the one thing the film does quite well for the most part. Is obviously, every human is individual, and so people yeah. react differently. Some soldiers don't care; they're just oh, yeah. a lot, doing a their lot job, of the soldiers and are you know, just being, they're stealing like, stuff and you know, fighting yeah. people unnecessarily. Some soldiers are just shooting ducks. You know, yeah. it's like just you know, trying to pass the time, get yeah. you know, bored. Other soldiers are actually you know, care about you know, they're trying to help people and you yeah. know, are some soldiers are upset about what's going on. Yeah. Some, Colonel same Peckham as... and the Major are, like, especially voices of, like... They're not necessarily voices of reason, because, like, their plan is, is mm. a controversial one, obviously. And then when it finally it's like, here's the order to fire on anyone who resists, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, now we've entered into territory where it's like, okay, this is, this is like, bad and all this stuff. Mm. But the thing is about, like, again, it's like, in a... In a and I feel like this is something that unfortunately the remake does suffer from in that the remake focuses exclusively its perspective on the survivor characters. Mm. Um, our main characters, David, Judy, and uh, Clank, or Clanker. Uh, he's known as like Russ in the remake, but he's, his mm. last name is Clank. Um, and, um, you know, like, and then there's like a few sort of other survivors, obviously involved, but the, the the perspective is mainly on them in the remake, and it has its benefits. But I personally, it does not compare to the having the perspective of the military and the scientists mm. uh, as well. well even... Because Colonel Peckham is clearly regretful of the situation. Like he is like miserable, yeah. and he's like, "Oh God, I, I, this has gone so poorly," and he's like just as frustrated as everyone else is with the military and the government and their handling of the issue. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's nothing. That that they, they show snippets of you know government you no know, higher <laughs> yeah. ups just sort of chilling and discussing. You know, well, what are we going to do about this? You know, we can, uh, nuclear bombs. Uh, yeah. We should get the president on the line. But they just yeah, you know, just sit yeah, and we, we, we eating some it's oranges. A, 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 yeah, I was gonna say I was about to say yeah, you, you bring up the oranges. Oh, yeah, they're always eating the hot... something, and it's like yeah, yeah. They're, just, they're not like in the, they're not in the action, so they're they're a bit out. It's weird because they're, yeah. they're talking about oh, do we nuke this town? Do we? Yeah. But they're 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 not 
they're exclusively they're concerned focusing... about the the bigger picture and not yeah they're they're concer- exclusively concerned about like the reputation <clears throat> it will give the US basically and like the embarrassment it will cause yeah. it's like there's no con- like consideration for the human cost really i think that there might be a few lines where it's like one of them might be like we mm. can't you know do that thing and it's all like sort of it's a lot of like infighting and debating mm. and like it's like oh what should we do should we do this oh no we're not going to do this uh, we're going to do this instead it, it's mm. and then like the president like barely gives a shit he's like no, no. facing away from the camera no. and he's like and they're like mr president what should we do and he's like ah oh. Yeah, even uh, use your best judgment or whatever it's, yeah. it's like he's he's fucking inept um but yeah, you have the the survivor characters though we've not really talked about too much yeah I, don't, I mean for me they're like other than maybe towards the end where you know they start breaking apart the first half of the survivor bit's not terribly interesting they're just sort of yeah no it's more of a building up to yeah to the sort they're, of madness they're they're um you know observing what's going on trying to get away from it all you know yeah. soldiers keep trying to you know wrangle people in and they you know, like slip away or they're, get into they're a little relatable bit of a fight. as characters but they're definitely they're just like, trying to sort of, ride they're it in, out they're a bit sort of stock um as well mm. like they're not as i don't think they're as interesting as um dr watts and colonel peckham um no I, I, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Some, some of them are. This thing is that, again, like as you say, later on they start to become a lot more like complicated mm. and sort of troublesome, and yeah, and, it's... like they they do go like crazy and nuts, <clears throat> um, and, and that's when the, the sort of the horrible and bonkers shit starts happening. Yeah, and even as I said, even you can't tell who's got the bug and who hasn't, as they yeah. say, because they're all kind of going a bit all over the place and. It's difficult because they're, you know, trying to. They they start. Mur- one of them starts murdering soldiers, but obviously they're trying to survive anyway. And you know. yeah, it's yeah. It, that was one thing that sort of disappointed me about the um, the the original, because mm. this is actually something that I think the remake sort of improves upon a little bit, but also has its shortcomings. Um, I guess we'll get into like major spoilers soon. But for now, we'll we'll keep it like like you know light. We'll just talk about like mm. our, our things. We won't get we get to too much like heavy story spoilers until a little bit later. But um, yeah, the way that they deal with um, with the characters in the remake is a bit more sort of natural, I think. Whereas in the that is one thing that I think obviously is just like quite dated about the seventies mm. one is just like. It's kind of the obligatory sort of like this is the protagonist and his love interest like and they embrace mm. and you know he's like got his head up and he's like you know he's like I'm the one that's able to keep things together and I'm so strong and and it's like um, I was saying to you when we were watching it I was like I was way more in, I was like way more interested in the side like um, the side character uh, Clanker mm. sort of becoming more of a protagonist because he was to begin with although he was a bit of like a brutish sort of like you know. Um, kind of an imbecile. No, he but was they like, showed him as capable and he was very capable. And so. he, yeah, he was, he was the only one that was motivated to do anything and try and like um, take action. Whether that was, um, and early on that was mostly just like, okay, I found some food, I found you know some mm-hmm. weapons, I found a radio and stuff like that. Um, you know, I was thinking we go and like you know like spy on people. Meanwhile, main guy is just kind of like you know, um, he's kind of like, no, 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 no shut up. Uh, I'm, I've, mm. I've got to spend some time with my wife. Um, you know, he he's kind of dismissive and outright like sort of like, like n- kind of like nasty to his friend, uh, yeah. and he's also Mister Steal Your Girl because um, hmm. uh, Judy, uh, David's um, like soon to be wife and pregnant girlfriend, hmm. uh, used to be used to go with um, uh, with Russ Clanker, hmm. um, and and that's a very sort of that's a point of like you know bitterness between them. That sort of clanker kind of got over, like you know, for the most part, until he started going crazy. Like, like up until like to, from the beginning of the film, like they're kind of like just you know like normal best friends, and then David just starts to get frustrated with him and, mm. and annoyed that he's there. Uh, I I really I, I'm gonna just, I I wasn't a massive fan of David uh, in this film. Uh, he he was 
incredibly boring, but he yeah. also ha- kind of had to be there because it's like, oh, he's he's that one character that's immune. But again, mm. I, he's like the character I would have been the least interested in making immune. But I, I will say that like, um, I did like his performance in the final scene he's in. Like yeah. that was very understated, and it was, it was honestly the the, the ending to this film is just fantastic mm-hmm. um and it that is something that i wasn't massively pleased with with the remake is that the ending's all right but it's a bit ev- everything in the remake is a bit more theatrical and a bit more sort of dramatic and it's like it, it's trying to be a conventional movie whereas <clears throat> the original is like without with the with the the exception of like the weird music in places um it's meant to be like a documentary you know it's meant to be brutal and it's meant to be very sort of like this is the situation we're just filming mm. it yeah uh, in in tone it's meant to be very realistic um and and sort of visceral uh, mm. it's very similar to the vibe that dawn of the dead provides uh in that it's kind of just like you know uh this is a list of events of people trying to hold up in a in a shopping mall during the zombie apocalypse whereas day of the dead is a bit more sort of narrative and even Night of the Living Dead's a bit of a both sort of situation. They have, like, some... You have, you know, like, your characters that are sort of, like, trying to survive, but you also have, like, the um, the sort of di- the interesting dynamics between the characters trying to formulate plans and sort of do stuff. I, I guess it's hmm. it's a bit more similar to Dawn, but I, I still think that it's it's got a few characters that are a bit more sort of noticeable from, like, Day. Because we've, we've said that Dawn is very... It does not really focus as much on fleshing out the characters as like quirky individuals as much as Day does. I did rewatch it recently, and I do think that it does a little more than we gave it credit for. Um, Ken Forey is fantastic in that film. Um, when he's like, you know, he's he's stuffing money into his pockets and stuff like that, and he's he's like, he you know they bury like um the 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 other SWAT guy in like a garden in the middle of like just in like a plant pot basically like a large sort of like mm. plant area uh inside the mall and he just like t- he takes a bottle of whiskey at one point just like standing over there and he's just like you know like ha- like it's just like sort of mournfully sort of you know, like celebrating with him and stuff like that and um yeah it's and then you know the ending of that film as well is just a, a great sort of melancholy sort of you know bittersweet moment hmm. um whereas day of the dead is a bit more sort of um D- day's ending is a bit, bit more abrupt um with its with how the escape happens and stuff like that but it's it's also got that sort of nice um different tone to it where it's like the entire film is pretty dour and then it has that more optimistic uh, ending but hmm. the crazies is just like a full-blown tragedy uh, yeah. It all and... it all loops back around in this one, and no yeah. loose ends. All the loose ends just kind of stay there because you know things kind of go wrong, and they're yeah. like, time to move on to the next outbreak. <laughs> yeah, so... that's that's uh, Colonel Peckham. Really, is um, one of the best characters in the film, and he kind of only gets introduced about like like um, like a, a third of the way through um, hmm. for the first like half an hour to sort of like 40 minutes there's the other guy there's the major who's also pretty mm. good but he's he kind of takes a back seat once colonel peckham arrives and dr watts arrives mm. um and dr watts as well is just like the the colonel peckham and dr watts like f- like fulfill that the, that sort of like perfect sort of um yin and yang circle of like how they're dealing with the situation uh colonel peckham is like okay uh i'm gonna try and deal with the situation even if it means i have to be violent uh and even if he's regretful but dr watts is like no 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 we have to help these people mm. we have to you know like we have to come up with a solution to the disease we can't just mm. like lock everyone away and and this is all insane and you know, and, you know mm. he's, he's like and there's the whole um, um obviously the government trying to keep it under wraps and like the whole yeah. you know voice uh, voice print identification, voice print thing, identification, yeah. and everyone's everyone gets a bit up, but especially the doctor is like, "Screw your authentication, just yeah. let me." That's what ends up being yeah. he, he one of the see, downfalls. Is... Yeah, he, he he can't see through the fucking tele like the gas mask into the telescope, so he just takes it off because he's just mm-hmm. like you know, like this is insane. Um, 
and uh, yeah, he, he has some great moments as well with the um, with the other the female doctor, where he's like, <laughs> where they're like they're just sort of jiving mm-hmm. with each other, and he's like, will you, "Will you marry me?" And she's like, "I assume you, that means you've got, you know you think we've got good chances then." Mm. And it's like. There's like nice little moments like that. I like the um, fact you joked about that five seconds before it happened. That was insane. Well. Yeah. So I made the I made the joke like a few seconds before it was made in the film that he's gonna go like, ah, oh, would you would you marry me? And then he and, says, Will you marry me? No. And I lost oh. my shit. Yeah. It was. It was. I <laughs> love it. I love it when a prediction comes together. Well, they don't. Spoiler alert! They don't get married. But no, yeah. no. Uh, I would say that um, Doctor Watts gets married to the floor, though, or perhaps well, his, uh, his own blood. Yeah. The stairs, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Doc- Doctor Watts. I guess we should we get into spoiler territory now because we kind of well, we kind of, we kind of. But yeah, basically, he's trying to find a cure, and he does, but he can't get it to but because of all the the, 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 the the security and the. But this voice is the interesting thing, can't... though, Joe. Does he? Well, he finds a, a, an opportunity no, but, for but, something. But, but here's the thing, though. The great thing about about that is Maybe. that it, it harkens back to his original his statement on the virus and being able to detect mm. it. The 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 doctor next to him, the, the female doctor next to him has no idea what the fuck he's talking about when he's like showing her stuff and yeah. like sort of he's not really telling her what what he's found. But he's sort of like you know, like like pointing out specific small details that sort of are like a nonsense to us. Um, mm. The sort of like they're like jargon, and then he runs out with like two test tubes where Afri can't get Peckham on the phone because the phones mm. like have to do the the like the five. It takes five minutes to do like the 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 voice print identification and stuff like that. So he's like, okay, I'll just run over to the to Doctor Pe- Peckham's place and I'll I, I, I'll get the cure to him while I get this. This phone call transferred over there, and then he leaves without saying what the fuck he's discovered to the to the nurse in a sort of frantic manic state. And then, mm-hmm. as you were about to get to, the soldiers bloody catch him while they're flooding people into like the gymnasium or something like that. And yeah, because and he's dressed in regular clothes, regular guy, so. they just think he's one of the infected, and so they try mm-hmm. and hoard him in there with them. And then after a massive scuffle, he gets killed in a in a fucking stampede, and he mm-hmm. drops his uh, his serums of or his like you know combinations of of yeah. uh, blood culture all over the floor, and he dies. Uh, so we'll never open. we'll never know if he found anything, what he found. You know, it doesn't doesn't but, really matter because it's all that's gone. The, yeah, that's the great thing though is that we don't no know one, if he yeah if no he was one like because he, he took his mask off, so he could mm-hmm. have been infected. Yeah. Um, so there's really just no way of telling. I mean, a lot of it's open, and it's like even you know, you say the main character is meant to be the immune one. Is he immune? That's Don't that's really another know. thing. That's another thing. So the ending of the film is uh, every every survivor dying after mm-hmm. you know several of them have gone mad. Um, the, <laughs> the the clanker, the the best friend to the main character, yeah. he he sort of has a sobering moment where he's sort of like. You know, like okay, I'm not myself. Um, well, yeah, because he he's the one who kept going on about, oh, you know, we don't know if any of the other people have got the bug, and then eventually he starts realizing that when he's not, he starts losing it a bit, and then he's like, wait, do I have the bug? Yeah. And he's like, yo, I'll I'll meet you at the zebra club. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you, you. and he starts club. rambling about some like he's Outside trying to be Bragg. friendly, but he's like, yeah, I'll meet yeah. you at the zebra club. Outside of Bragg, man. Yeah, he's meanwhile, like, David's trying to give him, like, a different direction. Mm. He's like, no, Zebra Club, man. Zebra Club. No, and then no. he goes off and he hunts down all the soldiers pursuing Yeah, he starts them. having a, just an all-out war with the soldiers that yeah. are chasing, fends them off. Um, for... And then, yeah, eventually yeah. His, his head explodes after he gets shot mm. in the face. Oh, so shot in the side of the head. Side of the head, um, yeah. But um, but yeah, the interesting thing about those two characters is that both they're both Vietnam War vets, and so mm. they know how they're firemen in the town, but they're 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 Vietnam vets, so they know mm. how very much how, very much how to handle themselves. Um, but uh, yeah, it's that's where part of the like the PTSD Vietnam mm-hmm. War angle comes in, and obviously the government being inept sort of is the uh, mm. the linchpin of like the the Vietnam comparison because it's like well, the, the Vietnam was a massive mess from the government perspective, like it was mismanaged, you know, um, mm. troops and resources, and the Viet Cong being you know like this overwhelming uh, defense force it, you know it's yeah it's about how the government 
is inept with dealing with these things and dispassionate and uncaring. And despite the fact that in the 1970s that would have been a very radical thing to put in your film, nowadays it's just like, yeah, that's probably mm-hmm. true. Yeah. Um, no, but good, yeah, it, sorry. Go no, on. it does a good job of all, you know, representing just all sides of yeah, pe- people and the you know military, government, regular people, all you yeah. know, all kind of going wrong and. And that, that's the other thing is it, it paints the government in that light, but it doesn't destroy the individuals that are the face of it, like mm. Peckham. It's like Peckham is a human being and does not want to do this, and is yeah. he wants to avoid the bloodshed at all, you know, all chances. It's just that you know the best he can come up with is to turn violent because that's what he's mm. used to dealing with as, a, as another you know guy who was in Vietnam and stuff like that um you know that's how they dealt with Vietnam you know they just mm. like oh we, we have like hostels in this territory uh we can't tell them between the civilians just shoot the civilians that's the kind of insane shit that happened um mm. and that's just like the light stuff which is mm. the horror you know the horrific side of that but to go back to the film, yeah. So it's it's only David and Judy left and left and and Judy's had like a, a vaccination, and this is like one of the really interesting um, parts of the film is that when it's just the two of them left and they're just trying to like hide as the soldier, the, like the outer sweep of soldiers, sort of like go past mm-hmm. them so they can finally escape the town. David realizes that Judy is infected as she sort of like starts going mad and losing it. Um, again, you could infer that as like her sort of trauma or whatever um instead of the virus but the indication i think to Mm. us is that the vaccination doesn't work yeah because as well we see one earlier one of the soldiers getting sick Mm -hmm. and then multiple of the soldiers um yeah so it's literally like every measure just is not working um and Mm. so eventually after like you know david's like dressing up like one of them after he kills one and he's trying to like you know, get Judy out of there, and she runs off, and then out of fucking nowhere, a bunch of like new crazies you know, run up and and shoot Judy, and he shoots back, and it turns out that one of them is like a student from the high school, and is like, "Oh, it's you, coach." Hmm. And whether David was actually a coach or not, he's like, he realizes, "Oh fuck, that's just a kid," and everything's, I, I've lost my girlfriend. The soldiers have come back and arrested him. And, you know, he's lost, like, everyone and everything. He's lost his, his you know, soon-to-be mm-hmm. wife and his unborn child. And... And his friend. And, and his friend. <laughs> and so it's like, in that final scene, when he's arrested and brought to the infirmary, and Colonel Peckham is readying to be, le- you know, to be leaving, mm. uh, and, like, the, the the new government, the new army scientists have come in, and they're just like, oh, yeah, well, maybe we'll find a cure, maybe not. <laughs> uh, we don't fucking know. Um... Like they, 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 like the, the guards say, should we do immunity testing on this one? And the doctor says, ah, forget it. No, not on that one. Are you crazy? Are you and crazy? Uh, are you crazy? Something. Like that. And then David looks at Peckham, and they lock vision, and, mm. because David, like you know, at this point, it's indicated that he thinks he's immune. Uh, and and he, you know, he's he's lost, you know, his family uh, and his loved ones, and so he just like looks at Peckham. And he just smiles like maddenly and starts like giggling mm. a little to himself as they sort of take him away. Yeah. And it's like it's not just the indication that that might just be like oh they've just let go of their chance for a, you know to to find mm-hmm. a cure, uh, just from being like dismissive about things. It's also that either he was infected and it finally took effect, or you again you can't tell who's infected because no. he's just a mourning husband and father. Yeah, that's the shame. He's another one. Yeah, but that's the thing. there's a lot like it does a pretty good job with the, the individual human reactions. Like every every person turning crazy in one way or another, in different ways. <clears throat> like you can't tell um, which which ones are actually crazy and which ones aren't half the time because everyone's just manic. But it does yeah. a really good job with that. The only thing there's like some bits. Obviously, it's a little bit dated here and there for the most part it's fine but yeah some of the i think the sound we design was it, the one the sound design some voice lines voice recordings that are a bit off yes yeah, so i think a I couple think... a couple of bits where the acting's not the best but it's like you yeah. know 
it's fine. But I, I, the Colonel Peckham and Watts, though, and the mm-hmm. characters surrounding that sort of storyline are spot on yeah. when they're acting. It's just it's just our main cast, unfortunately. Yeah, well, some of the side survivors. Um, yeah. like the, 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 the girl daughter. who started. Yeah, the daughter's a bit. We, we didn't know if that was her doing a really good job or a really sort of mm. like meh job. Um, and um, and and the actress who plays Judy really wasn't doing anything. And no, she's not even in most of the scenes. To be main fair. guy was very boring, and Clanker mm. was was like he had like presence, but he was also like he had mm. like a weird sort of like as if he wasn't an actor, and they just like hired him because he like yeah. he he like looked the part. So like and... like whatever, man. He just yeah. kept saying, "Man, Jesus, man." Yeah, I got the bug, man. I got the book, man. Me at the Zebra Club. <laughs> you the Zebra Club, that's out of brag. And, obviously, some sol- it was mainly just soldier voice lines and, like, hel- the helicopter bit. Where the helicopter was the one where it's like... Stay yeah, where so you the, are. So the, the ADR in the helicopter, yeah. it sounds like it's in a wooden room. Mm. Well, like, every soldier, than, when yeah. a soldier's not in the room, like, they're meant to be outside, it sounds like they're in a box. It's like, oh, yeah, because they're think- not... I think it's because of how much it was mixed louder than like the gunshots and, uh, yeah. and stuff like that. Because the gunshots are quite quiet in the movie, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and like the sound effects are sort of like either non-existent or quiet. Because that's another mm. reason why I theorized that that's why they put music in. I mean, obviously it's because yeah. it was a film, and back then you put music in your film. Um, but it's mm. like, yeah, it would have worked a lot. I-, I said to you at the end, I said I would have wanted a. Uh, a version more... where the the ADR was hmm. the, like the, the helicopter ADR was redone, and maybe the other ones were mixed a bit quieter, and um, there was no music in the film, at least maybe like minimal, yeah. because Something... that would have been way more yeah. sort of. Because that's the thing. It for the most part, it's all all good, and it is quite immersive, other than a few bits where it's like, okay, that sounded a bit off, or like the music where you start. Here's a chase scene. Music kicks in. It's like sometimes. It's a bit. Oh, it's it's a it's a contrast to the rest of the film when you start breaking into a chase scene with music and it's like yeah. you're now watching a cop film and I'm like, well, it could work, but the you know. the ending uh, the ending song was another mm. indication of that where it's like yeah what comparing it to like yeah a few years later uh, Dawn of the Dead with that mm. that awesome sort of like contrast of like the the playful music and like the zo- the, the zombie infested mall yeah. it's just, just shots of like the zombies like moving um you know through the mall and and yeah it's such a i mean again like those films have such great endings and crazies has a really really great mm. ending but yeah that music is just like as, as peckham's being like airlifted up after he's had to like strip out of his clothes yeah. and put on a new bunch of clothes it was it was very like this is so out of place mm-hmm. this music it was like it was completely tonally dissonant to what was on screen not like mm-hmm. contrastingly it was just a mess uh, in terms of that 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 song choice I think it was just because they had access to the song mm-hmm. and it's like we need a, we need a credit song but yeah I mean um, that's that's the crazies for the most part I mean the remake th- this is one thing I would want to bring up mm-hmm. with the remake just um, quickly is that. As, as I said, um, with regards to the story, they focus exclusively, really, on the the main like yeah. survival uh, survivor characters, um, rather than there's no perspective from the government really. At one point, they they managed to uh, capture like an official, mm. like a government official who's sort of spying on the town. Like this is after the the, the infection's gone to shit. And they question him a bit, and he's like, "Oh, it's a it's a bio weapon and stuff like that." the The funny thing about the crazies is that they kind of like painstakingly in the original, um, they painstakingly explain how the virus came about and what it is, and they sort of slowly reveal details about it. Hmm. In the in the remake, they kind of forego that for the most part. It's like, "Oh, this is the plane that landed in the the water supply, and this is." Uh, oh, we'll turn we'll turn off the water supply because it's starting to make people crazy. And the mayor's like, "Don't turn off the water. I want water in my town. It's crop season." Uh, which was <laughs> is it was like the classic like it wasn't in that voice, but it's like that's the voice I heard it in because um, it's yeah. like ah the inept mayor. Well, this is a great trope, but whereas like yeah the, the mayor in um, the original is inept, but he's also like extremely like yeah I, I'm ca- I care about the people and like their mm. health. It's like. Now, the mayor in the remake is like, I want, I, we will lose all our money. We can't do that. I like money. 
He's like Mr. Krabs. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. David and Russ in the in the the remake are are sheriff and deputy. Okay. Um, which actually <clears throat> does give it a different flavor, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. Um, because it it was. Again, when I'm talking about the the remake, it's I'm not talking necessarily negatively about this. It, no. It's not on the dread level of like being so good. Like dread, we need to talk about it at some point. I've been pushing for it for about a year now. We need to talk about it, Joe. No, I'm going to force you to talk about dread at some point. But um, it it's still up there. It's it might be closer to the Evil Dead remake in terms of quality. Um, yeah. it's it's a very well done remake, put it that way. But it's mm. definitely it's a definitely different. a little bit. It's a bit more safer with its decisions. Yeah. It does it. It presents the infected people a bit more like infected people, and mm. the the sort of makeup and that is a bit more sort of evocative of zombies and stuff like that. And twenty eight days later, with the sort yeah. of like the, which I actually. I, I prefer the original being like, oh yeah, but they just looked like regular people. Because then you have like that grandma that with the fucking. <laughs> we didn't even mention the granny with the with the the, the crochet um, pin or whatever. Oh yeah. That little like needle uh, that she stabs <clears throat> into the the soldier. Yeah, she's just knitting, knitting away, and then a soldier comes in. She stabs him with a needle, and then yeah. goes back to knitting. And I love that that. The, the, how she stabbed him as well with the aftermath we see that like she's mm. managed to sew a bit of the the cloth into him so she's still like embroidering away yeah. as he's like struggling down the stairs with like cloth dragging from him and stuff mm. um but yeah the, the that is one thing about the the remake where it's like yeah the, we, we only get to meet one soldier once and we we do get he's like we do get more of a sympathetic sort of um reading of them but we don't really get that wider contrast that the original yeah. sort of gives with with like it's like oh yeah this is a good soldier this one's these group guys are like robbing the bodies and stuff like that yeah there's yeah, there's um there's a really interesting sort of um subversion that it has early on but it, it doesn't really sort of commit to it and that is that when they start like gathering people together they actually manage to capture I mean, they, they do in the, the original. They managed to capture the main characters, but the difference in the remake is that they managed to capture the main characters um, and disarm them and, and like, you mm. know, take them through the processing. And the processing is quite good, but it, it, in the film, up until that point, it's not revealed that uh, Judy, uh, David's wife, is pregnant. Mm. Um, also, that was another thing that obviously they modernized for um, the remake is that Judy's no longer a nurse, she's the doctor of the town. But uh, but yeah, basically, um, she gets it's like they're, they're doing like the temperature gun thing and stuff like that, and it's like oh she's got a high temperature. They take her off to you know to the infected a lot, and it's like well no, he's like no she's in she's pregnant and shit like that. But David R Russ gets sort of separated and you know mm. away from them and that. But David actually manages to uh, he gets given like a, a green band and stuff like that at this sort of staging area when he wakes up after he's been knocked out. And they've actually started like leading a bunch of the uninfected uh, survivors um, to like uh, this this sort of gas station just outside of town, where they're, they're sort of like they're getting people into trucks and and sort of getting people out of trucks, and it's like a it's like a big sort of staging area for like getting these people out of the town supposedly, hmm. uh, and then it's like oh give them a green band that means that they're they're okay. So it looks like the beginnings of like them being you know airlifted out of here. Well, their family members and the rest of the town have to stay behind because they're infected, and there's a bit more sort of severity to that and all that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the infected are a lot more cr like creative, and um, uh, and there's some really good acting from uh, some of the people who who play infected people in that film. But um, but yeah, eventually. Um, after the the deputy has, has sacrificed himself as well in that film, he's also he he's presented a bit more. It's a bit more natural his descent into madness in the remake, I'll say. Mm. And the guy who plays him is quite good. Um, he does a really weird thing though, where, like as he like before he dies, which I didn't really understand, which is that he they give him like a small little gun, like one of their like last guns that they have, like while the mm. well David and um, and Judy try and like sneak around after they've escaped. Yeah, because uh, because they're, they're trying to get to that that gas station where they're airlifting people out, so they can sort of escape everything, um, you know, and sort of and sort of you know slip in with uh, with the government measures to evacuate people. 
So Russ is like, and Russ is Clanker in this instance. Mm. He's like, okay, I have my gun. I, the soldiers are pointing at me. I've, I've like trying to grab their attention while my friends escape. Um, I'm going to unload my gun. He's got an empty gun. He puts it in his back pocket and he starts walking to, over towards them to sort of distract them, pulls it out and gets shot a bunch of times. And that that's it. Mm. He sort of goes like, fuck you. And then they shoot him again. Um, but he, it's like, I don't know why he didn't just like try and take a few with him. Mm. Um, especially as a crazy, like it, it's it's very contrasted with uh, the original, where it's like, yeah, Clanker just fucking lets it loose on those sh- on those soldiers. Yeah. But yeah, they, eventually the the main characters, uh, David and Judy, they make it back to the gas station, and mm. it is revealed that all of the people that they were going to airlift out of there with the green bands have been like all killed and burnt and p- like plopped in these trucks. Um, so it's like, oh, they killed everyone. Uh, and that was something where I was a bit like, oh, it's a harrowing discovery to have made. Because they, the first thing that they notice mm. is that there's just tons and tons of yeah, bullet casings all over the floor of the gas station. Mm. And then they finally look in, like, one of the trucks. It's like, oh, shit. Like, there's all of the dead bodies and, like, you know, like, people of all ages in the town. Like, children and, and adults mm. and old people. It's, you know, it's, it's a harrowing discovery. But I do think it's a bit, like, it's a bit it's a bit dishonest i felt where it's Mm. like you've set this up so it's like oh it's a subversion of the original where it's like they're actually making the government is actually making positive efforts to try and get people out of town it does make sense in hindsight because it's like oh well they couldn't really let these people go because it's like they just tell the world about you know like all of their family and their town dying Mm. but it is a bit like why are we being shown that they're being airlifted out It, it, it was a very confusing moment i think um for myself but yeah but yeah it was it, but it's got some interesting sort of like um uh like action scenes and it. it's it felt a bit like um resident evil 7 really in terms of the mm-hmm. like how the main character in that how you play as him it's like he's got to like you know like get like a knives out of his hand and stuff like that and it, it's being stabbed and it's got it's like oh this is being chopped off and it's it's very like sort of like you know survival horror in a movie sense um which is what those newer sort of um, resident evil games sort of have the vibe of of like they kind of have the vibe of texas chainsaw massacre and stuff like that it, it's it's very visceral and i appreciate a lot of that sometimes it was very like oh we're gonna have like some creativity to trying to yeah. sort of get past you know these um these crazies and stuff like that and at one point there, there are bits of the, the remake I actually love from a, a from that sort of creative perspective because there's a bit when uh, they when they drive their car and there's a, there's a helicopter sort of spying around like this is going to attack mm. them and so they hide it in a building so they drive in and it turns out that it's a car wash and some of the crazies nearby turn on the car wash and mm. start attacking them in the uh, in the car wash area and that's where one of the uh, the the main characters dies as like one of the attendees like breaks open the back window takes like the other like the sort of like daughter character that would have been in the um she's just mm-hmm. like uh, like a high school girl in the remake but in the original it's like it'd be like the daughter character tie a fucking rubber rope around her neck that's like connected to like the mm-hmm. the pressure sort of like washers at the top of the the at the top of the car wash area and it yanks her out and she fucking hangs to death. No. Um, it was fun. like it was like it was brutal and horrible, and it was great. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Well, they... um, yeah, but yeah, there's there's like there's touches like that in the remake that sort of make it. It's definitely worth watching. I think like I would definitely mm. recommend the original over it. But yeah, um, before we give our like our ratings and that, uh, the 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 remake I think is something where I, I wouldn't rate it right now with a specific number, no. but. Because it's not worth it. Because we've not, both of us have not seen it. So it'll be no, I saw fair. a little bit of it. But... Yeah. Um, yeah don't... Check check it out though. Check it out the the remake. If you if you're looking for that sort of film, especially this would have been great. Uh, it's a bit late now, but at the time of like quarantine and lockdown, it would have been mm, fantastic yes. watch uh, for making you not sleep at night. Mm, paranoia. Yeah. Crazies. But uh, but with that, I guess. Um, Joe, is there anything else you want to bring up before we go to final final scores? Uh, zebra Club. Zebra Club. We'll meet at the Zebra Club outside of Bray. Outside of Bray. I've got the bug, man. Nah. Um, 
Joe, uh, the original The Crazies, 1973. Mm. Uh, what are we thinking? It's crazy, man. Um, I don't, yeah. No, I, did, I actually did like it. Um, again, other than like a little bit of, you know, some of the acting might be meh. Um, some of the audio, voice lines, music, meh. But the overall, like the old, the concept, the idea, and the execution of the majority of it, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, especially, obviously, pre another precursor to later films, and even this should, this uh, not far off some of the real life uh, examples. Um, mm. No, I did like it. I'll, I'll give it a number, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what number to give it. It's been a while. It has been a while since we've done this. I'll give it a 7.7. 7. 7.7, 7, okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, this is a bit weird because we never gave the originals any numbers. We won't do that here because we're, no. sort of, we're, we're running out of time right now. Um, but, um, yeah, it's uh, the crazies. Uh, it, it definitely has those elements, like you say, that are sort of a bit more dated with the filmmaking and the acting. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be honest, I'm a bit of a sucker for these like cult B-movies. Um hmm. And it, it definitely well surpasses what it should be on that budget and that sort of that level of creation because there's like there's the thing is is that despite the fact that that audio and ADR is weird in some in, in like certain instances mm. it's I, I've seen films that have done it way worse that have come out like yeah. twenty thirty years after that like like fucking Axum doesn't even have like proper dialogue um, recording in it it's and it's like visual quality is that of like if it was filmed through toilet water um that this you know the, the crazies is is in my eyes a really really great film and really an understated and under like appreciated gem uh mm. so for me personally i this this is a, it's a another weird one i think because you you went with 7.7 .7. Mm -hmm. i think i'm going to give it a an 8.7 mm -hmm. uh, that yeah I, i'd i'd raise it a point it's nearly a nine for me but it's it, I, I think that it, it belongs at about an 8.7 for me personally yeah. um there's always a, room for improvement yeah exactly some bit, so. yeah it's it's one of those things where it's just like this is an aspect of the filming where it's the filmmaking mm. where it's like yeah it, it has become dated but I definitely don't think that that impacts upon the no. effectiveness or the enjoyability um of the film Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, it gets a thorough recommendation from me. Uh, it was a, it was a really yeah. great film. That's definitely worth checking out. I mean, I know, it's, it's, it's a weird one, but it's almost real. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, we we live in a, a weird, wacky, uh, terrible time at the moment, uh, and it's 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 a bit harrowing to see things that sort of capture an essence of that in multiple senses mm. um but uh but we're here to talk about film we're here to talk mm -hmm. about you know the things that that entertain us and uh we... keep us sane so yeah just a couple of crazies talking about the crazies yeah. you know two more crazies yep yeah. <laughs> but yeah um that was the crazies uh i don't know when, when more episodes will come out but we'll still keep working on them. It just might mean that the release uh, might become a bit more sort of. Hmm. It might become a bit more infrequent. But that just, doesn't uh... mean that it's doesn't mean we have forgotten. It doesn't mean anything like that. We're still very much here working on the podcast. Um, it just sometimes things be like that, you know. And I think everyone can relate to that. Hmm. But I guess uh, if that's all we got, then uh, we'll we'll see you in the next one, everyone. Until the next one. Uh, goodbye, you goddamn crazies.